Good friggin' morning from New England, folks, and welcome back to episode 13 of the So New England podcast. I am your host, Ian Brownhill, joined by my co-host and counterpart, RJ Travisano, Hello. and of course, our producer in all things Life's Better in New England, Vincent Guineri. What's going on? Yes, sir. We are excited for our next guest. You've seen him. He has been taking the internet by storm with all of his amazing comedy sketches, but without further ado, let's give an f- official intro Gotta rj take us strong. take us forward who do we got today <clears throat> episode 13 folks we are slaying and today's guest puts us with another great member of our beloved <coughs> new england and let me tell you not only was this person hard to write about because all i did was laugh but his name had my mouth watering the whole damn time because well you'll see <laughs> <laughs> our guest has over half a million followers between all his platforms, and I believe this is our first stand-up comedian. It is. I think. What an honor. It is. Check for his, in his socials for all the dates for him being on tour, winky face. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't really a skit our guest hasn't done. Corporate humor, check. Jokes about stereotypical college kids, check. Which may I add. They're fucking spot on, by the way. I love those. Thank you, sir. Maybe just paying homage and showing respect to a fellow comedian. Check. And one of my personal favorites when I did my research for this, The Meanies, which we'll definitely get into. <laughs> <laughs> you may know him from the Comedy Coop or by his slogan, Finance Hits, Boston Bits, and Silly Skits. Help me welcome on the set today for episode 13 of the So New England podcast, Mr. Joe Fenty, a.k.a. Fenty Frat. Chicken! You are not kidding. That is a serious intro. Welcome to the wow. pod. Is that not welcome awesome? To the I feel pod, so brother. welcome. If you want, you can just like save that and make it your morning alarm. Yeah, that'll just be my ringtone, and I'll let it play the whole way through. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. Especially time. in movie theaters. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Joe, welcome to the podcast, man. Thank you hey. for making the trek down. I know you're up in Boston, Boston guy making the trip down to Rhode Island for us. Dude, I appreciate for it. Me. It was a lot of, a lot yeah. of fun to get down here. Yeah. <laughs> so we connected um, probably about what two years ago was the first time we crossed paths, like at the concerts at Gillette. Was yeah, it close to that? Yeah, either the social suite for like the concerts or maybe one of the Pats games. Yeah, but something there, w- something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I had been watching you um, for quite some time up to that point. I didn't even know that you were a Boston guy until we crossed paths there. Um, which was really cool. And obviously uh, I've enjoyed, you know, being friends with you, watching your content, learning from it, being motivated by it and having a friggin' laugh. Uh, So it's really, really cool that you're here with us today. So what we always do is, is we like to get to know people a little bit outside of their content before we dive into the good stuff. So tell the people a little bit about you. How did you get to where you are today? Yeah. So I started working in corporate. I do still work in corporate. Uh, like I love comedy, but I also Truth really- bomb off the rip. Yeah. Let's go. My you man's know? got a day job. <laughs> I do. Cause like, look, I love comedy, but I also really love health insurance. So <laughs> that's, yeah, I have my priorities. So I worked or I've been working there for about five years. And like one year in, it was 2020, COVID happened. I saw people on the internet doing like corporate Natalie, work, retire, die, doing jokes about corporate. Like, I think I could do that. Right. And then started to make videos whenever I felt like it, which then turned into two a week to four a week. And now it's one every day. Literally. Uh, Yeah. It's, it's a machine that you got to just keep feeding. And it's been fun. It's led to me doing stand up. It's leading to the tour. Um just a comedy nerd with a corporate niche, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Well, you're doing a great job with it. And I think anyone who watches your content would agree, especially because I think so many people really resonate with the relatability of content. Yes. And you, my friend, are a master of that craft. (laughs) You know, sometimes people will kind of relate to my screaming and then sometimes like, okay, a little too far, bring the blood pressure down, Ian. But I swear, every time I watch yours, I'm like, I never want to work in finance because if this is what it's actually like, (laughs) I am so uninterested Dude, it is like the amount <laughs> yeah. of times that people kind of seem like they're talking from a script of saying like, boil the ocean. Let's put a pin in this. Let's circle back. Yeah. Happy Friday. You're like, why are we all saying the same things all the time? <laughs> and I'm, we don't notice it. Exactly. Yeah. It's like programming. I, yeah. Literally. You know, I forget the name of the, there's another um, girl who does it, but she does like the, oh, geez, a fly. There's a, um, yep. she does the, like the Skype interview Toodaloo. ones. Not Brian, but yeah. Toodaloo. Yeah. And I when she's like, Toodaloo, I'll find it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And those are just like, it's so funny. Like corporate be, Aaron, is that her? I, there are so many people. There's who, a lot with like yeah, corporate blank. Corporate, yeah. exactly. And it's just like it's so triggering to me because I'm like, I never like. Please TikTok, don't ever fail me because if I have to go back into that environment, I'm like, I don't know if I could do it. 
but uh, <laughs> but you're a Massachusetts It'll be native. There. I am, yeah. Yeah. So and you and you're a big. Are you a big Boston guy? You live in Boston now. Yeah, I live in Southie currently. Nice. I grew up, you know, 20 minutes north of Boston. Right. And what's then, that like for you? Like being in Boston, you like it? It's sick. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. What? I'm actually moving from Southie to the South End. On oh, okay. One on moving hell day. Moving hell day. Yep. Literally, everyone uh-huh. in Boston moves in September. What's the yeah. deal with that? Why is everyone in Boston moving in September? Because everyone's on the college schedule and everyone oh. moves in for Labor Day, and because we're the mecca of colleges, I guess. Like there's so many rental properties. Say, are, yeah. like okay, so that makes much sense. Property for the students, and how many campuses are in like a five mile radius of each other? There's a ton. Like yeah. in Boston, like the actual like right next to Park Street, you have what is it? Suffolk. Yep. Uh, Simmons is close or something. Yeah. There's a ton just like right there, and then you go out a little bit, and you have Northeastern, Wentworth, BC, BU. Jeez. There, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> well, I dropped out of community college. So I don't know any of those names, but right on. if we're talking sports, <laughs> yeah, baby, sign me up. Boston, what is it? The Eagles for the BC Eagles. BC, BC Eagles. Eagles, let's yeah. go. Give me a caca for that one. Yes. All right, there we go. Thank Sometimes God. you have to force it. That's what she said. Anyways, um, <laughs> when you were growing up, did you like, do you, were you like the extroverted kid? Did you have like the comedy, like, Funny bone, were you always like this or did it something that you developed over time? I definitely was a comedy nerd. Like I loved it. I remember in third grade watching like the Comedy Central Presents stand up, like the 30 minute whatever on TV. And I was hooked. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. And I would literally memorize Brian Regan's like whole bits. And then when my teacher would leave the craft classroom in third grade, I would just run up to the front and do it. Oh my like, God, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, because it Destiny. was Destiny. Yeah, it was just so much fun. And one time the teacher like saw it and was like, Yeah, all right, you can do it. Yeah. I, I did like the clean bits about like spelling bees or Pop Tarts or whatever. Right. Uh and then from there I was like it was always kind of like nagging at me to like stick with comedy in some form. I wrote satire in college. That was like my way to like be behind the scenes and like work on my writing. And then through COVID, I saw the internet was a great place to do it. You didn't have to like listen to anyone. You just made stuff, and then it led to stand up. That's, That's so awesome. cool. Yeah. What was it like doing your first stand up show? Like, how does how was the preparation like? Because I've been <laughs> asked before, people are like, "You should do stand up comedy." I'm like, Mm-mm, "Not my <laughs> thing." Like, improv, a little bit of funniness here yeah. and there with me and my buddies. Sure, I can maybe do that, but like, which is also subjective. Depending on what you're, you know what I mean. But like, (laughs) you know, but like to do actual stand up, you gotta, you gotta have real, you gotta have thick skin, you gotta have a good gut, and you gotta know how to write. So like, what's the preparation like? I would have been petrified. The first show, I maybe sweat, I sweated through like five of my shirts like beforehand, (laughs) just because every time I thought about it, my heart would get going. I'm like, oh my god, in six hours I have to perform, I have to perform, I have to perform, just leaking all day, and. I packed the house with all my friends. Like I told everyone, I'm doing my first real set tonight. Yeah. Everyone come through. I had like 30 people there for me. That's Hell awesome. yeah. White Bull Tavern. Like, uh, right. Yeah. So it's like. Rhode Island guys. No clue. All right. We're done. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're free. Right? It's like right by TD Garden. Nine, 99 restaurant. We know that. Applebee's. Yeah. Sign us TGI up. Friday. Yeah. We'll right be on. there. But <laughs> yeah, the whatever and, you just said. No steak clue. steak and chicken finger meal. Classic. <laughs> Classic. But what was I saying? Oh, right. I was sweating my ass off. Um. Packed the house with a bunch of my friends. The set went great. And then I did another one like two days or three days later. I'm like, and I did great. I'm like, I'm invincible. I'm the best comedian in the world. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then I did Bill's Bar for my third ever show. And I bombed so hard with oh. the same exact material. I'm like, what happened? Uh, what? And that's where I was like, okay, you, you got to keep writing and you got to play to your audience and do this, that, and the other thing and develop the thick skin because it's, so demoralizing when you like go all out for a joke and then you're met with nothing. Right. Oh, I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. I think that's my biggest fear. Not not that I've ever been put in a situation or asked, but when I think <laughs> of like, you know, you watch all the Netflix stuff and you're like, wow, that looks so cool. And I'm kind of funny. Like, I wonder if I could do that. But as soon as you see hear somebody talk about like a joke bombing, because like you said, sometimes it's a great joke. It's just wrong for that audience. Yeah, yeah. Some pe- sometimes you kinda, people just don't like an idea or yeah. they can't get behind a premise or like right. they don't get a, a reference and then the whole thing is shot. Right, Yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. That's got to be tough. Like, what it, do you have like a, now that you've, you're you like a seasoned vet, if you will, and you've done this, what is like your preparation for like, is there like a step within your joke where you're like, okay, this isn't going over with my audience? Do you, do you just like drop a joke or do you pivot? Do you try to improvise and add more to it? Like, 
What is the, I'm just curious about the structure of how those things go. Yeah, so comedy is a mess. <laughs> when you get there, half the time you don't know how much time you're doing. You don't know when you're going up. Oh, shit. Like a okay. lot of the show, a lot of people think that comedy, it's like one headliner with like two openers. Right. A lot of times when you're starting out, it's like six people all doing the same amount of time in a showcase. Right. Okay. So sometimes you show up and you're getting five minutes. Sometimes you get 10. You can't really like prep your how much you're going to do beforehand. So I get there, hear, much, hear how much time I have. And then in my little book, I write the headlines of the jokes that I'm going to do okay. just as like to guide me. Like yep. I generally know how long my jokes are. So I'll write it all down, get on stage. And if they're not vibing with an idea, then I pivot. Like I got about maybe 10 minutes about like living with my girlfriend or like moving in with my girlfriend and uh, like what relationships kind of look like. If they're not on board, then I pivot and do like poop jokes. Yes, that's always <laughs> it's always a common denominator. <laughs> and sometimes you just got to do jokes for you. Yeah, like uh, one of my favorite ones to do. I tell the crowd like I loved comedy because you can say the thing you've always been thinking, and you can get real vulnerable. And maybe somewhere, someone in the world will agree with you, and you're not so alone, and you can build a community. And that's why I feel like I'm brave enough to say this. Have either of you ever taken a shit so big you get hungry afterward? <laughs> <laughs> The answer is yes. Yeah, absolutely. I know. 100%. And there's always guys who nod, and I'm like, you're not alone, brother. I call it pooping myself hungry. Like, yes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, That's I so like good. That. Yeah. How do your jokes start? Do you take motivation from, like, what's going on around you? Like, do you build off of jokes you've heard? Like, where's your inspiration come from for specifically comedy? And then we'll talk more about content. It's noticing where your friends laugh when you talk with them. Ooh, okay. Like Ooh. that's where like a premise will come from. Yeah. And then you build and you like try to put like the actual stand up comedy principles to it. Like the rule of three, where if you're going to do like a list of examples, one, two, three, all kind of escalating in severity. That third one has to be the big one. Right. Or just like a classic bait and switch where uh, I don't I actually don't have any bait and switches. But basically you present something like, oh, isn't it terrible when. Oh, I, I have one. This is a, a joke from my friend Peter Martin. He's like, don't you hate when you're so drunk in an Uber and the other person keeps yapping, so then you have to go pay attention to the driving again? <laughs> 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 so, like, you're like, oh, okay, he's the one driving. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. Okay, cool. I like <laughs> yeah. that. That's cool. So there's a lot of, like, principles you can work with, but in terms of finding a premise, I... I can't just like sit down at my desk and be like, I'm going to write five jokes today. Right. It's so okay. hard to do that. Interesting. Yeah. That's why that, I feel like that's also why I feel timid about it myself. Cause I'm like, I just, I can't just like sit down. Like mm. something's got to be going on. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if actual like stand up comedy is like yeah. that same, especially because you know, the most popular thing right now, at least on social media is crowd work. Oh my God. Yeah. I was going to ask, gonna, how, do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah. That was one of my questions is as a comedian, you know, I feel like I'm sure there have been people who have done crowd work or maybe it's not planned, but they do it because there's a heckler or someone being rude yeah. type thing. Because I've, I've been in the seats when someone's being like that. So how do you feel about that? What's your thoughts on that? I mean, crowd work works from like a content perspective because it is natural. It's off the cuff and you're not burning your jokes when you post them online. You're like, here's oh, this thing that will never true. happen again. Okay. Yeah. So that's why people are free to post it because right. you're funny in the moment. And you're never going to do that again at a show. Mm. So if people come to see you, they're not going to hear that again. Exactly. You're not like, giving I up hate your posting set. my jokes. I have to do it so people know I do stand up. Right. right. But I've had people at my show beat me to a punchline because they were excited about the joke. They had seen <laughs> oh, the shit. clip. Okay. Yeah. So I, I got to the, like, I asked the audience, like, how is this possible? And he said what the punch is. I'm like, are, are you heckling me or are you really astute? Like, are you really astute? What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> and I panicked. I'm like, ah, yeah. I've never had this oh, happen. Shit, oh, that's no. tough, man. But I talked to him afterward. He's like, I was just a huge fan. I've seen that joke before and I thought I was helping. I'm like, you actually were doing the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you sit there and you do what you're you told. Shut you shut up. Quiet. <laughs> you just go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Damn, that's so going stressful, off though. that, do you, uh, I know that wasn't, technically a heckle but like what's the craziest thing someone's ever done for you mm. in the middle of oh if you can Dude, if you want to talk about it yo i will uh so unless I there's have, a pending lawsuit no it's, it's fine <laughs> i have a very easy joke where i say like i love doing stand-up because if i suck here you guys can just boo and it's over 
But if I suck on the internet, I get called Ugly Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, good. dude. So like quick, easy joke. But Damn it, you do look like Princess I, Diana. No, I looked up a photo of her and I was like, same haircut Oh and my, you have like You have like the similar flow when she yeah. had the short hair, which she pretty, predominantly did for most of her life. She though. had sick flow. Oh my gosh. And, um, and when I got that comment, I was like, oh, it's so accurate. Yeah. No. Oh. But it's a great joke. Uh, <laughs> but I was on stage doing it, and this woman kept interrupting me at the halfway point, like trying to like positive heckle. So I'd be like, if I suck, you can boo, and it's over. She's like, you don't suck. I'm like, thank you. Let me continue. And then I'd start back again because I didn't want people to like forget what happened. She's right. like, give us your best. I'm like, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh. <laughs> And then she did it one more time. And at that point, you just ha- like, I try to give people a few tries to like get it out of their system because I don't want to start it right away. Yeah. Uh, she was <laughs> heckling someone earlier, had mentioned she was like visiting from New Mexico or whatever. So I was like, ah, oh, New Mexico, shitty people and even shittier food. <laughs> <laughs> and then the crowd erupted. It they didn't know what to think of it because it was oh, like damn. a Monday night show at right. uh, Thirsty Scholars in uh, wherever like that. Love MIT that area. place so much. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. With my MIT friends, exactly yeah. that I work wicked now smart. for. Yeah, <laughs> it's so <not> smart. Wicked <laughs> smart. Except the New that's Mexican crazy. people. I don't know. <laughs> that's I don't crazy because that's usually um, for me when they when. That was like the first kind of thing I followed on TikTok was a lot of the comedy stuff. Yeah. And I found it fascinating when you'd be in the middle of a punchline or some kind of joke or something performing and someone bothers you and it completely messes up the whole groove. And like almost like the rebuttal to that and how you get back on track. That's fascinating how people can do that. I love those clips. Yeah. So good for you. Well, a lot of times... <laughs> Stay your ass in New well, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, if someone interrupts or, like, adds to a bit, it's probably where we're already going. Right. So then we just make eye contact and act like we're coming up with it right there. Right. Like, I have a whole joke about dude wipes, like those wet wipes oh, for I your love ass. Those things. Oh, we love those. Yeah. We know all about those. You know all about oh, those. my gosh. <laughs> Remember your thought. We're going to pause and do this right now on the podcast. Okay. Poop jokes. <laughs> now, listen... I'm going to be very clear. I understand that it says flushable wipes, but they're you're not re- actually flushable, but they're really not very good for your septic system. So yeah. you, you genuinely, you you generally should not flush them. However, it also is very clear that you should not flush them with everything. It is a separate flush. Correct. This psychopath Hold to on. my left. Don't, no, don't put, ask oh, no, him. no way. I, ask him. What do, do you use dude wipes? No. Okay. Do you use oh, wipes sorry, at all? You're a grown no. man, I guess. Okay, so what do you think? I guess you just got to give us our opinion because we're already here. We're committed to the bit. Yeah, we're already doing it. This man puts his wipes in the trash. There's a very serious That's reason. actually the right thing to do. You should do that. Okay, it's- let's backtrack here yeah. because I need you on my side. <laughs> this man has fresh poo on a wipe That's sitting the- in a trash can asked, for a couple days. Asked, he a acts couple, like, you have to take no, no, out no, no, that no, 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 day. No, no, no. We used That's to be roommates. I know he doesn't take out his trash every day. No, so... Growing up, when I lived with my family in my grandmother's house. No, you're trying to. No, on, you're listen, trying listen, to. Listen. No, you're trying to be. I get it. You can't, mic, you can't flush them. Septic systems are bad. There's a exactly. whole like Adam ruins. Everything I know, but he's trying to give this like so, sentimental so, background. Like, no, no, but no, no, my no, no, mother, just my mother made me poop. My mother was man. a wipe, and my father was half wipe, <laughs> and now I'm king of the wipes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I take it, wipe, and I'm like, oh shit, side up, right in the trash. <laughs> Like, I fold it up nicely so and, like, put it in there. Maybe I'll wrap it in some toilet paper. It's not like if you go. Say that again. There's still Say that again to me. Did you hear what you just said? Yeah, I cannot wipe my ass. Poop is not a delicacy paper. that you can fold in a neat, an orderly fashion. No, and just I like, know what you mean. You, you don't try hard other, enough. You fold the other side. And then, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're on his side? This well, is ridiculous. I, okay, I'm, I need I'm everyone both. listening to this podcast to please DM me and let me know. If you use dude wipes, do you flush them or do you put them in your trash you're not for your dog to come and pick you're up? You're not supposed to flush them. That's a real thing, But if you do throw them out, you got to take that trash out that day. 100%. Because it's not a litter box. You can't just put shit right. in a room and just be right. like, all right, it's good. But I also like, it's not like I have a bunch of, when I lived in the particular situation where I was doing that consistently, it's not like I had anybody over all the time. Like the bathroom was like my own private bathroom. It was I my fucking it. throne. Are you justifying having shit wipes out in the open in your trash can They're not on out the fact the that open. you don't have guests over? 
They're not out in the open. What is wrong with you today? What is, what is me? <laughs> what is it? Say what you just Did said you to me take again. Medicine today? You okay. fold your poop. Okay, but back to where we were with no, you I because have this one more is thing okay. Yes, this. <laughs> I have my own bathroom, and you know how liberating it is to clog it and then just put the the bowl down and be like, "I'll deal with it later." Like, <laughs> <laughs> that must be nice. Now yeah. I don't know. I don't have that luxury. I'm not. I've never been like the friend and they'll attest to it. They've known me fifteen plus twenty years, something like that. I don't know, and I'm not the host. Yeah, I never have people at my house. And when I did Because have, no one wants to come to a house that smells like poop. This was literally over the last year. So what about the last 19? You've been wiping for 32 years. What do you mean That's over the last true. year? There was a few years there where I just shit my pants. <laughs> of course. And then yeah. someone wiped it up for me. Thanks, mom. Dude okay. wipes. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag dude wipes. Can yeah. you sponsor love those dude guys. wipes? We love you. The Shea Extra Large. They've sent me packages before. They They're awesome. To- They're always in my comment section because I used to make... Back when TikTok was fun and yeah. they was like popular sounds, I would always <laughs> talk about how I would drink my morning Dunkin' and then I would shit myself. Yep. And they were like, where do we send the dude wipes? Gave my address. They sent me a bunch. I still have pumpkin ones from last year. They smell mm. fantastic. Mm-hmm. And they flush wonderfully. Yep. Interesting. Also, I don't know what my septic looks like. It's probably a mess. Yeah. Remember that Hopefully when my landlord doesn't one listen to it. Like, like fist of just <laughs> dude wipes there. Yeah. Just holding it up. Yeah. Okay, right. so we went when on our own tangent the floaties, there. You'll so. know why. That's what a podcast is, baby. It's yes. just riffing. Yeah. I you started with the dude wipes. I forgot where you were going with I it, but I completely forget where we were going. All right, well, let's bring this back to the fact that you are a fantastic comedian, but you're also a great content creator. Yes. How did the content like actually start for you? Like, I know you said that there were some moments where you saw the people like, I can do this, but like, what was like the first video that put you on the map? You're like, I've made it. I'm going to commit to doing this like all the time. Like, what was the one? Yeah. The first like series that worked, it was, uh, the intern who clearly had a connection to get the internship. Cause like I work in corporate, I've had internships in corporate. I've seen the kid who like knows the dad or has like someone on the C-suite in his family. <laughs> right. <laughs> so my thought was make this kid so dumb. He doesn't even know what a dumb question is. <laughs> so the boss comes up to him and is like, Hey man, can you get me that Excel report by the end of the day? And the intern goes, yeah, dude, of course. One question though, is Excel the green one? <laughs> like he, he's so oblivious to like what tool he should even be using. Right. He, He's like, oh, yeah, this is a good question. Like, Vin loves that Vin one. Vin loves that one. <laughs> Vin's a guy that's a graphic designer. Uh, that hits home. Right yeah. On. Deals with that all the time. So then I started to. Stand Excel. Yeah, I started just, like, hammer that series more of, like, part two, part three, part four. What are other things that, like, this nepotism intern would do or say or, like, find himself doing? And then from there, I just started expanding out of, like, all right, I've established that I can make jokes about corporate. There are other silly things in here that's more than just, like, a nepotism intern. Right. And then one of my friends was talking, like, I had, like, the corporate niche ready to go. And then one of my friends, she was on, like, all the dating apps and kept saying how she was so pissed that all the guys had an answer of, like, I'm weirdly attracted to Tom Brady. (laughs) And I'm like, all right, that's a bit. Like, we we can work with that. So then I started to do, like, fake hinge profiles of like the typical guys you'd see in Boston and like what their answers would be. And from there I was like, all right, I've actually, I've, I know Boston very well. I can make some jokes about this. That's more right. than just like doing the accent. Right. So, uh, then Boston started and I've always just been a sketch nerd. So when sketches come my way, I'm like, all right, let's, let's make them. Usually yeah. they flop, but I, I love them too much. No, <laughs> yeah, they, it's, uh, uh, it's always, um, <clears throat> very interesting to me when I watch, how you perform within yours because there's just such like a cadence and a rhythm, which I feel like most people who consume content who aren't in that world won't understand. But as I watch it, I always just, I watch how the principles of your performance kind of go. And I'm always just like, Again, mo- it's motivating for me. I love watching people that I that I know. This is such a kind, a f- wow. No, but you know, because it's like, you know, sometimes there are creators where I watch, I'm just like, you know, I can't help it. I'm a human being. So I watch, I'm like, I'll either be like, this isn't, funny how did this go viral yeah i get slightly jealous where i'm like hot damn it why didn't i think of that first whatever it may be but like i always watch yours and i'm like this is so wonderfully done and if it doesn't go viral people just don't understand (laughs) what he just did because it was so good (laughs) it's always them it's you're good baby you're good (laughs) (laughs) now what about your so you have a a a regular full-time job but what do they think of your videos oh they know all about it like i have to 
whatever, like in my compliance report, like say I do this on the side. And a lot of times I've like hopped on Zoom calls and like the manager or the director on the team is like, what are you doing here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you, what do you mean? You, you don't, you don't work here. Like, so they're aware. Like, oh, wow. That's yeah. hilarious. My manager on my most recent project, like he had followed me well before I got on. So when we hopped on the Zoom together, he's like, what do you know? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Does yeah. anyone ever, like anyone in your office or any of your coworkers be like, is this about me? Like, what, what is this supposed to be? Or do they all just kind of know that it generally is about them? <laughs> <laughs> they know, like, I never joke about anyone in particular. Right, like, right, I'll right. pull from things that, like, have happened over the years. But, like... I don't have a clear example of like the nepotism intern that I'm making fun of. <laughs> it's just like anything that someone has done poorly or like a stupid slip up. That's where I'm pulling it from. I'm not like, all right, what did, what did Brandon do today? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So they, they know that I'm just like joking about the That's job good. in general. Yeah. Do you enjoy making content or doing your stand up more? Stand up so much more. Stand-up really? So okay, really. cool. It's so much more rewarding to like sit down, actually write a thing and then present it and get like a real laugh in the moment. Ooh, like good point. I don't mm. I don't care if a video gets like two million views. It's cool. Like right. it's like nice. I wrote something that worked, but I don't see and feel the laughter. And that's just an adrenaline rush you can't mm. oh avoid. that's a really good point yeah wow. no so the I videos like that, that do go viral do you ever take those and kind of turn them into a joke within your sets it's really hard to do it right because it's two like, different things it's so it's two different things like one of my bits that goes really well is just i put on eight patagonia jackets right it's dumb it's easy <laughs> but people eat it up because like oh yeah like work does give me a lot of patagonias but if i were to do that on stage it'd be like what is this this right. sucks right you have to be like awkwardly quiet while you un unzip each one and yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> so then if comedy is like the main focus like what would be the next like i don't want to say like dream but like what's the trajectory for you like where do you want this to go where are you working towards do you want Netflix specials? Do you want the fame? Or do you want to be the guy that like circuits all the local bars and everyone's like, oh, fucking Joe, Fenny Five Trick is going to be at the Comedy Connection. We got to go. Like, yeah. you know, do you want to sell out Madison Square Garden like Kevin Hart? Or, you know, like what's the dream for you? It's just doing stand up however it looks. Like it is, there's nothing more fun in the world to me than it. So however I can perform and perform to more people, that's what I want. So, like, I'm really excited to start my tour in September. Like, I'm going to Chicago to perform for the first time. And then Atlanta. September in Chicago. Yeah. Then Atlanta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bang, bang. Bang. Uh, what, are you a hype man on stage? I'm, of course I am. <laughs> Thank you. I Love appreciate that. it. I'm here. Yeah. Follow his links. It's all in there. It's all in the You can get the tree. tickets <laughs> straight through the links. I promise. I've been there. Actually, there's something I got to ask you about that, yeah. but continue. Oh, I know exactly where you're going. Oh, with dude, it. you got yep. me. It was. Yep. <laughs> oh, I know what he's talking about. Yep. yep. We'll get okay. We can I've, do it. And I've commented on that to you before. I was like, dude, I yeah. clicked the link like an idiot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do it now. So, yeah. so obviously, since we're all on the same page. Yep. Uh, in the links that we're referring to, where you can get all his stand-up comedy stuff. So go there. Uh, there's also another link that is m- fucking hilarious. <laughs> And of course, being the guy I am, I had to find anything and everything I could to make the intro for you. So I clicked all the links. Of course. But so, <laughs> just of, so you know, if it was a real link, he was interested and he was yeah, looking. Yeah, he had to see it. Yeah. Had to I was get, you were getting money. <laughs> <laughs> I was subscribing. I was unsubscribing immediately after you got paid, but yeah, I was subscribing. I appreciate it. I don't think you can say the official name just because of Spotify and YouTube. So maybe abbreviate yeah. i don't know how that works um uh, on, on we're not c- on ceiling fan friendly yeah. yeah yeah we'll go with that yeah um but for those listening go to fancy fried chickens links yes follow them all buy your tickets and then the link we're referring to click on it i promise you you'll laugh yes you it is yeah. worth it um what made you think of that so i mean <laughs> you just like the internet's a gross gross place and you have people <laughs> who dm you disgusting things and I thought, all right, oh, yeah. I got I got to do something to just get people off my back. So I put the link to Ceiling Fans Friendly in my thing, and you can affiliate link anything on Amazon. So I just found like the bonk, go to horny jail. Oh, dude. dog! I laughed and, so hard yeah. at that. It was so funny because like it. I was sick of it. And what's really frustrating is that my links in there, like I have TikTok, Instagram, 
uh, you know, YouTube and everything. And those have about like 4,000 clicks. The ceiling fans friend club one has like 5,000. I'm like, I, <laughs> are you kidding? Like, yeah. I think it's a sign. <laughs> Maybe backup career if you need it. It's, I'm, I'm so good. <laughs> I'm I so get good. such a kick out of um, speaking of like weird messages. You always do like a great job at. I don't want to say calling out the people, but calling out the people who send really shitty messages. Oh, to hold you on, this is, this is my thing. Don't do this. Yeah, you want okay. the meanies? I know okay. you brought it up in the intro. <laughs> Go ahead. I wanted to commend you for that. <laughs> that is the to me on social media, the perfect way to handle that because it gives you the say. Like I saw that, but here's something back but in a funny, almost professional way. And people watch it. I looked at every single so one funny. of those. I laughed so at each one of them. Funny. And they made me laugh because I was like, it's your way of getting back because they are rude. It's so rude. We talk about it all the time because he's very good at likes, whether they're mean com or comments or whether they're mean or not are still comments. And I'm the one who's like, I'm going in the trenches. I got profiles for days. I'll get in there. <laughs> Let me in there. And I have to ask most of the time and he's always going to say no, but I still ask. Yeah. So like, I thought that was really cool. So I commend Thanks, you for man. that. That's a good, that's a good thing. That's yeah. cool. Very, very unique way of, of clapping back at people who leave negative comments. Well, on sometimes your they just like tee you up so perfectly. Like yeah. this one dude, I'll say it. He just looked like a frog. He looked like an actual <laughs> frog. And he just DM'd me, you suck. I'm like, well, buddy, I i don't even have to say anything. So I just screenshotted his profile photo. I took a Google image of a frog and just sent them both back at him. <laughs> <laughs> and then this idiot, he comes back and he sends one of Patrice O'Neill, a very big black comedian, and then me. I'm like, I don't think you understand how this game works. <laughs> I was going to say... Patrice is very big. Very big. It's and a large does human. not look like me at all. Yeah. Nope. Also, one of the most accomplished comedians yeah. while he was around. Right. So, yeah. Also a compliment. Yeah. yeah. In, in a way. He, yeah. He, one, made me look even funnier because he yeah. didn't get what I was doing. <laughs> right. And then uh -huh. just to, like, completely miss the point of the game. Yeah, he does yeah. not understand the bait and switch joke. He definitely no. would not have gotten your Uber one. He would not have. Well, that's yeah. Peter Martin. Oh, yes, yes. Your, your friend. Yeah. So mm -hmm. That's too funny. Oh, yeah, my no, goodness. I thought, for those of you who are either not paying attention or don't know, there's a subcategory of things that Fenty posts, and it's him clapping back. So go look at it. Go to Instagram, click meanies. It's worth your time. <laughs> I love it. Dude, I was yeah. the best. I love that. Dude, even today, I got I caught such a stray. I <laughs> I the story was just like, I'm moving. I hate my landlord. Please send me your bad landlord stories just so we can feel together. Yeah, I was reading and, those. Yeah. And then one person was like, You need to use moisturizer. Your skin looks floppy. I'm like, <laughs> What? <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> I got a kick out of about that. <laughs> what? Dude, it's actually crazy. Like, it, it's like you want to connect with your audience a, a little bit because yeah. it's good for your brand. It's good for you. But people take it as like an open invitation to just like be assholes. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. think they're like being nice almost. I don't know. I mean, it seems like yours is a little different. But like for me, it's not like I played into this joke a couple weeks ago about like how old it, how old oh, I, I was did looking. I that one, yeah. And that was, I posted all the nice ones, but there were some people in there that were like saying some shit. And I was like, right, what's yeah. wrong with you? I don't yeah. know you like that. Why would you say that to me? I think they just want to get a rise out of you. Yeah. Like, that's in why one I, of my videos, someone said like, you have really weird eyes. And I'm like, what a weird thing to say to a stranger. And then they backpedal. They're like, oh wait, right. I forgot that you are a human. Yeah. That I said that too. And they come back like, oh, well, I just mean the, the camera angle. I'm like, no, you know what you said. You yeah. know what yeah. you said. <laughs> Too late now. Yeah. I've acknowledged you. That. Yeah. that stuff, I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a, uh, so like, obviously you've got a wide variety of like content. What, what for you is your favorite to like produce and come up with? Oh, the actual just sketches that don't like the ideas of a sketch or ones that aren't just like, here's a joke about work. Here's a joke about Boston. Like something that I've come up with. I wrote one. It's my favorite sketch so far. It's called why everyone is moving to Denver. And basically, I wanted to come up with the idea of, like, the gentrification committee. Right. Like, what are they doing to get people to, like, Denver, Jackson Hole, Austin? Because it seems like every year there's people moving to those cities. So I'm like, all right, what can I do here? And I thought of the pun of calling it General Tri-State Finance Group or Gentrify. I'm like, I got to make a whole sketch about this. Yeah, see, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Like, the way that he puts it. That's what I mean. Like, I would never think of all of that. That's, like, very – that's awesome. 
I well, like it's that. It's just cool. like the stand-up mind of like, here's a yeah. premise. What if there were a gentrification committee? What would they do? And then you go down the line of like, all right, what are things that like, if I had to go to Boston Seaport, what am I going to see there? Like, <laughs> and then I did a whole one about like, welcome to Boston Seaport, where it's like a fake intro infomercial type thing, just like dunking on this very just sterile neighborhood where like the average rent for a one bedroom is $4,000. That is a real stat. That's mm. insane. And I'm like, this deserves to get made fun of. Like, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. That is so crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I can't believe it. That's, yeah. uh, so the sketches are the ones where I'm actually like really writing out the scripts and I'm yeah. like coming up with like jokes. How long does it take you start to finish to like write, record, edit and, and get it posted for like one of those sketches usually involve multiple people. So, like, I filmed one that's coming out very soon about, like, the Welcome to South Boston. It's, like, an intro to Southie. It took me maybe, like, 30 minutes to write the sketch. It took us, like, three and a half hours to film it. And then he's, for my photographer, he's editing it right now because he's a hero. Go follow Mark Trinidad Media. Um, but it'll probably take him, like, another two or three hours to get that over. Oh, shoot. Okay. And then I have to watch it and make sure, like, some of the cuts are right. So, all together, that one might take, like, eight hours. Right. But ones where it's just, like, me in my bedroom, 30 to 30 minutes to 60 minutes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why I ask that, too, is because, you know, like, I know how long it takes me, and I'm thinking, how the hell did you do this with a full-time job? Because, <laughs> like, that sounds exhausting. Well, it's, it's I, I force myself to, like, use time whenever I can. So if I'm taking the bus to go to work or to a show, that's when I'm writing scripts or gotcha. that's when I'm editing, when I don't literally need to be in front of the camera. Gotcha. So then once I get home, I can take, like, two minutes just to film. I set up the camera, and especially if it's one where all the angles are the same, it's just me delivering the dialogue. That'll take two minutes to film, right, maybe right. 20 minutes to edit. That's that's how I get it done. Nice. And what is your like? What does your friends and family think of the TikToks and everything like that? Like, what's your what's your feedback in your inner circle? They. What was that like when COVID first started and all this all really started going? When it first started, the immediate feedback was like, "Why are you putting on a suit to make these silly little videos? Like, yeah. what are you doing, you nerd?" And then <laughs> once you start doing something enough, people just buy in. They're like, "Oh yeah, that's just what you do." Right. If you get over the hump of it being new and it becomes your thing, then people are just like, oh, yeah, that's just what you do. Yeah. It's like I had people, like, pejoratively yell TikTok at me when I first started doing it. Right. Like, <laughs> when I was out to bars or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I, I know I do this. Like, I, I enjoy doing it. It's a means to do comedy. And then they're like, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not ashamed that you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, all right, cool. Well, so how about when it comes to, like, consuming? Do you watch a lot? or? Oh, yeah. Are you a doom scroller? Dude, yeah. I used to you be so Ian good, guy? but I am a... What was that? That Ian Brownhill guy? How you felt about, him? <laughs> what about that guy? That fucking accent. I can't tell if it's real or not. Oh, my God. You do do a really good accent. You oh, have it thanks. Down pat. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's okay. I exaggerate a lot of it deliberately. Like, of there's course. so many words that don't really have the accent when you talk to someone yeah. that's really from Boston. But, like, I do it because it aggravates people and it gets them to engage. Of course. Because I'm like... Listen, it might be a hate comment, but there's 50 of them. That's 50 more comments I wouldn't have had if I did it right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, no, like I used to not be such a doom scroller, but like in the last probably like year, <clears throat> I think because of the shift going on with TikTok and everything, I found myself becoming a bit of a doom scroller trying to find inspiration yeah. because it's like, there's a fine line between, I have a lot of fun, creative ideas, but what is TikTok like? putting out there right now like what mm -hmm. what is going to take what will reward me on tiktok if i try and do stuff which is why i have like such a odd variety of things where you know one minute it's like the screaming new england guy then it's like cosplay then i have like i'm yeah, wearing like, suits and yeah your suit one yeah like, it's one, like yeah like it's I, like you know it's, it's all over the place but yeah. i have like an audience for each one but, it but works, it's like it's like thing. trying to find it but it used yeah. to be so much easier but what do you what i do really you typically like your watch? series of like millennials finding their playlist or whatever oh yeah yeah, yeah the wedding like, one yeah that's yeah those were, those were some of yeah. and i love dancing i loved it was so refreshing but seriously finding all the songs writing them down recording that I'd like screen record all of them. Then I had to edit it in CapCut. Then I have to upload it, make sure that it doesn't get taken down before I can actually start making. It was yeah. like six yeah. hours for each one of those videos. And I did it for like 
uh, like, like two six, weeks. Yeah, six yeah, or it, seven parts, right? It was like, like it two was weeks of one. just committing to those particular so, videos. So I want you guys to know that that, <laughs> that right there. It's a job. Out, he was talking about it. A, a genuine skit he wrote and is performing with his friend. Eight hours. So when you get to this point of, oh, what are you doing? I got a job. So stop so, it. But what, yeah, what kind of content do you typically consume? I, I mean, the algorithm really just gives me like sketch comedy and stand up comedy because it knows that's yeah. after what I care about. And then things that are tangential to being like a 27 year old guy. So, like, I'll get Nintendo stuff and I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch the shit out of this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to watch the shit out of this. <laughs> so, yeah, it has me down so right. Like, when the new Zelda game came out, it was just flooding my feed and I was eating it all up. Yeah. Like, yes, more, more, Give me more. more. <laughs> and I didn't even play the game. I beat the first one and I got the second one. I'm like, I, it's too complicated, but I still watched all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what do you do in your spare time then? Uh,. I don't like have any anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's like this is like your whole life. Yeah, kind of. Cause yeah. like, if you want to like work out and read books and then have two jobs, there's not really much time in between. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's I gotta be tough. Yeah. yeah. And even then, like if I want to play video games, I now have to like go on my spin bike and that's when I play video games. Right. Cause I'm like, all right, well I'm working out productive. Good. Right. I can do this thing. That's an actual waste of time. Exactly. Yeah. I tried. I've been trying to do that because you know the whole don't open your phone first thing in the morning. Blah blah blah. I got it. This is what I do for a living. It's really hard for me not to wake up and check my phone to see yeah. like what the buzz is. But I have been getting so much better at like do like waking up and getting on my treadmill to start looking at all my stuff. Yeah. Because it's like next thing you know, instead of doom scrolling for forty minutes, I walked for thirty minutes and I was able to put my phone down because I was tired and it like hmm. it kind of gets me out of that flow. So it's like one way to get my exercise in too. I've been trying to do that, but hmm. I've done that yeah. too. <laughs> You find that funny? What are you, what are you hoofing huh. and puffing about? Do you remember the uh, video game on our phones called Pokemon Go? Oh yeah. my God! This here man we go. Stood on We're... his little high horse because he wasn't a Pokemon it's guy. Very different. This and is very different. This is so out of context. You, you look down at us for being no, 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 Pokemon no, no, no. people. He no. said that it was not exercising <laughs> because it got people out to go find gyms and badges and the Poke Centers, but that's not exercising. But you can do you don't think scroll. walking is exercise? Listen to me. Get walking is absolutely exercise. Get after I, I agree. If you take 10,000 steps a day, you will just shed pounds. Mm. You will. You will shed pounds. You will. Okay. Yeah. Let's put some context behind this, okay? Well, the argument things. was that it was not exercise to me, in my opinion, when you were just standing there and you're just holding your phone doing this stuff. Now, I'm an adult. I could admit when I was wrong. The game advanced. People advanced. And you started walking around the park and walking around down. And of course, but at the time when I was making this argument, which is why he's upset, was because he's like, you're on the treadmill looking for Pokemons. And I'm like, okay, what they're doing though is not exercise. Being on the treadmill is very different. He's like, you, this is exercise. And I'm like, We're com you're comparing apples to oranges. I'm saying mm. if you're on a treadmill, it's different. But listen. I'm mature enough to admit that I was wrong. And that's, we accept that I growth. was wrong. We accept that growth. And I apologize. We, we, we embrace and accept that. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. You got to grow up a little bit. Probably going to get this cut because he doesn't like getting called out on the uh, uh, opinions, <laughs> opinions change, you know? Opinions do change and we should welcome Listen that. Listen to me. You want to talk about cancel culture? My, I cannot imagine what would happen to me if my Facebook statuses from when I was like 22, Ooh, 21, me. 22, oh, yeah. like being a nightclub promoter, like the, the oh, stuff I would man. say. Just like outlandish. I'd have been canceled in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. No, no. Just to you, clarify, nothing sexist or racist. I'm just saying, like, I just had, like, these very well, there was insecure, a egotistical, yeah. vulgar takes that yeah. were, like, not well, very good. Well, there was a brief period of time where I feel like when you were using Facebook for what it was, it was almost like, and not just you, everybody, was, like, your way to vent. So you would go and you would make a status, and it wouldn't yeah. just be, like, oh, chilling at the crib with the boys. It was, like... A paragraph of like cut yo, my life into pieces. Yeah, didn't know that it would be there forever. Like yeah. we thought, because it was the first time it was coming around. Like in conversations, it just disappears. Right, and you mm -hmm. want to talk about the things happening. Like Blake Griffin tweeted, "This is maybe one of my favorite tweets ever." Just ran over a squirrel. Casey Anthony is a monster. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like hilarious joke, but. That's there forever. And right. like, I know that Blake Griffin said that. Right. Oh <laughs> That's my gosh. Gold. That's yeah. hysterical. I did not know you said That's that. So yeah. that just made my or night. Or like the, I, I can't say it here, but the Ray Allen tweet. Oh, I don't know that one. Oh my God. When you get home, look it up. It's like he means to sext whoever he's 
uh, about to hook up with that night, but he tweets it instead. And it is so out of pocket. I love that. Ooh. It's love so that for out Ray of pocket. Ray. Good for Ray. Yeah. He deserves it. As a shooter would say, <laughs> shoot your shot. Yeah, shooter, shoot, 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 baby. And, and it's, <laughs> it seemed like he was on a mission that night. <laughs> so, but, Ray Allen, Boston Celtics. This is going to lead us into our New England specific segment here. Right on. Let's get this out of the way. First things first. Can you please rank your Boston sports in order? Uh, in terms of favorite favorites, yep. yeah, Celtics number one. That's that's got to be it. Big basketball guy, yeah, big basketball guy. Then football, even though we're gonna stink, but Patriots too. I guess hockey, then baseball. Okay, yeah, and then the Revs. Sure, underneath that, there you go. Sure, <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to I've been trying to get some people on the Revs. I'm I not even a soccer have, guy, but I do have fun when I go. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's so much fun, but like. It's hard to get people out there. I have yeah. no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, people are like, he's offsides. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did not hear the ref call a whistle. Offsides in football is very different than offsides in soccer. Yeah. And I don't understand it. They're like, if he goes past here, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go get the concessions. And when you guys start yeah. screaming, I'm going to scream. Yep. And when you guys boo, I'll boo. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great team player right there. And the f- free jackets. What? The free jacket. No, what, I'm sorry. I'm free jacks. Free jacks. I don't know why I added jackets to that. What are the free jacks? The free jacks. Free jackets. What was that? Free jackets. He's giving out free Patagonia jackets. She didn't tell you. Oh. In the email. Oh, oh, right. The New England free jacks. <laughs> sorry. Are, New England free jacks. Yeah, sorry. that's our um, rugby yeah. team. Yep. We always want. And they them. just won their. I don't know oh, what the, the division isn't is. That the renegade or something. Is no, it? it's the free jacks now. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if the renegades are still the same. Not too sure. Or I don't know if that changed, but. They're ballers. They've won a ton. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they did Get a rebrand. the data. Yes. Yeah. One day we'll have a big enough studio where we'll have a TV where he can just like pull up the facts, you know, like all the yeah. all the fancy people get to do. It's going to be cool. That'd be sick. I can't wait. So, do you have a favorite New England state by chance? I mean, I guess Massachusetts just because I'm from it. And I all right. It. Yeah. So then why don't we go ahead and rank them since Massachusetts. Are you going to put it at number one now? Yeah, I'll put it at number one. Bold choice. Yeah. I, I mean... When people say do you mean Massachusetts or do you mean Boston? Because we're not talking cities; we're talking the whole state. When people say New England, you mean Massachusetts, like you you know. And then when you say Massachusetts, you really mean Boston. (laughs) No one's like, "Oh yeah, I'm a New England guy. I'm from Worcester." Like no one does. No one does that. Shout out to Elijah, who's just a little bit, a little bit west of that. You know, (laughs) we love. Or like if someone was like, "Oh yeah, I'm a New England guy. I'm from Hartford." You're like, "No, what? No, you're a Connecticut guy." (laughs) That's that's it's too funny. No, yeah. Harford might be the on. only semi acceptable New England city, in my opinion, because it's so close to Springfield. Can we say oh, one more shit. just for the pizza? Go again. <laughs> <laughs> he hates when I talk New about New Haven with the pizza too. We got to throw that in there. Got to yeah, give him a little pizza's love. gas. It's yeah, gas. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, you got Massachusetts, Mass one, New Hampshire too. I I love their vibe. It's so yes. sick. Yeah, and live you for can, your die, yeah, brother. Live for your die. <laughs> Good screech. There it is. Uh, give me Vermont at three. Ooh, yeah. bold. That might be the highest Vermont's ever been. Well, it's, no, we, it, it's so scenic, and it's got yeah. you know, it's got your hiking and skiing and Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. It's quiet. syrup. Yeah, it's quiet. I'm it's, so uncultured. It's, I mean, it's actually like, offensive. It's like Canada and New England. That's kind of the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right? right. Canadian no. goose. Canada That's, goose. Canada goose. Yeah. Damn it. That's close. <laughs> right. Is that the is that the biggest competitor of Patagonia? You think? No, uh, North Face. North Face, yeah. probably. Well, I think so. I don't even Maybe know what I'm like saying. Ari, like LL Bean. Maybe yeah, that could Ooh. be it. LL Bean is Maine. That's Maine, yep. right? So what am I? I have Maine, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Uh, so I don't, know. don't forget where you are right now. I know where I'm at right now. So I guess I'll put. We could lock you in this room if we wanted. I I think Connecticut's got to go last. Connecticut's got to go last. <laughs> that state is just a highway. That's all it is. Am I gonna say anything? <laughs> It's just a highway. You're either like in the New York part of Connecticut or the wish they were Boston side of Connecticut. No one's ever like, I'm a Connecticut guy. So, yeah, Connecticut lasts. Uh, I'm a Connecticut guy. And then I'll, I'll, I got it. I'll tie Maine and Rhode Island. We'll take okay. it. I don't know enough about either of them to really give a strong stance on this it. This is it. You're looking at it, pal. This is all we got to offer. I you. did perform at the Hyde Speakeasy here, and I did have a lot of fun. So that's helping its case. There and, we go. Honestly, yeah. the fact that I talk so much shit that we don't know anything about Rhode Island, and he just said the Hyde Speakeasy, and I don't know what that is. It's that place. 
It's a speakeasy. You gotta know the code. There you, you get go. the code from the. <laughs> you get the code from like the, the Instagram, and then you show up room or something. It's some president room, and there's like a hide speakeasy underneath. Yeah. Okay. And they have comedy shows there every Friday and Saturday. It's Very badass. It's you know what so it is cool. though? Like as Rhode Islander, like Rhode Island as a whole, like. Again, we're like a mini Massachusetts. So, like, when you talk about Rhode Island, people well, from Providence. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what I mean is, is that people who are from Providence only hang around po- Providence. Like, Boston yeah. folk are only in Boston for the most part. And then, like, you know, where we're from in Southern Rhode Island, which is literally the last exit, we're like Western Massachusetts at borders like New York. So, so yeah, you're like your we're like very family. different. Like, if you talk to Westerly people about Providence, we're not going to know much about it because. If you, we'd never come up here. It's a 40 minute drive for us. So that's like, that's way too long. Out of that's the a, question. That's a whole day and trip for you, you it's bag. like 40 minutes to get from your apartment to the local Dunkin' a mile up the street. So <laughs> it's like two very different worlds we live in. Correct. So, but yeah, yeah no, yeah. Rhode Island is, you know, Rhode Island is, we got beautiful oceans. We've mm-hmm. got good food. There's some nightlife and entertainment, usually in the summertime, more than, more yeah. than in the winter. Yeah. It's definitely, we thrive on small businesses that close almost. Every month. The next Small business is closed everywhere. Dude. Yeah, it's like it's just not. Yeah. I, uh, not crazy, I did find it very funny. Uh, so we actually posted this after like our third or fourth episode. And we got a lot of people who took to the comments and we're actually ranking them, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. But people like I knew Connecticut. I knew people had, you know, their beef with Connecticut. There's a lot of notions about Connecticut. But like Rhode Island's really not like it's Connecticut. And then Rhode Island's like right down there too, which I didn't know for the longest time. Because my vote, like I never, geographically, no, 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 yeah, I was no, gonna no, say, no. Wait, are you talking about a map right now, or you're no, saying like people people's opinions? Felt about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A lot of people had a lot because I think Rhode Island just easy to dunk on because you guys are so small. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. We got yeah. a little man's complex. Yeah, I saw like a historical thing, and my uh, my our good friend Camilla, who was on our pod recently, shut up, Camilla, she, shut up. She re- <laughs> shut up, Camilla. She recently talked about that and how Rhode Island really was actually called Rogue Island because they sent all the rogues here because we were the oh, first state tricks. that. That wanted to there separate. There is a Rogue Island Comedy Fest. That makes more sense. Oh. Right. And it started because okay. we have like Newport, we have Portsmouth, and we have a lot of like little island ocean areas around here, mm-hmm. even though it's the East Bay for us. But it was Rogue Island. And I think the other thing was um, we were the first state that separated church and state, and we were kicked out from Massachusetts and sent down here (laughs) (laughs) and kicked down here because of that, because they were, um, I forget what the religion was. Oh, geez. um, Anyways, we got kicked out because we didn't, you know, agree with the religion in the church and state and all that kind of stuff. So, Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, there's, there's a fun fact for you. That's all of Rhode Island. And we have coffee, milk and peaches trips. You ever had three all the way? I'm sorry. Hot wieners. What what do you, you got to slow down. Okay. What was all the things you just said? Hot wieners. A, a, a hot dog, I assume? A soggy. A th- it's no, a hot dog. No. Is it a broad? No. Is it? All right, he's it is the food a wiener. Guy. It's a wiener. It's a hot wiener. Foot long? They can be. Okay. But not for not around here. First so We're just Irish. A, just a dog. All right. <laughs> it's a wiener. Okay. I keep saying it's a wiener. All right. Yeah, it's not sure. a hot dog. It's a wiener. There's, it's a wiener. There's, there's, a, a, there's a clear <laughs> difference. Yeah. But yeah, there's a place over here called Onlyville Wieners, and it's like, we say York world fi- we say world famous, but no one from Boston, ten miles up the road, even knows what the hell it is. Yeah. But I think you get three all the things. way, okay. and you get uh, a coffee milk. What is a coffee milk? Oh boy! All right. Okay, it's just <laughs> regular milk, and it has a coffee syrup. <laughs> okay. Autocraft oh, is usually it's what like it's like. Chocolate milk with coffee. Yes. Okay. But better. It it's like chocolate better milk, name. but better. I think what doesn't work about the name is that people put milk in their coffee. I think that's what oh, throws it off. Oh, cool. Well, fun fact here. We're going to plug Dunkin' right now. They have a brand new product coming out called the Dunkin' Latte, which is oh. Dunkin's rendition, shout out to Rhode Island, for coffee milk. We love that. Hmm. Speaking of Dunkin', go to order at Dunkin'. Ooh. Do you want uh, me to set the scene for you? Dude, I miss so much when they had the two bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel for five bucks. Oh. That was my Ooh. bam, bam, Damn. bam. Yes. That still it, is. It's just eight bucks. Bro, you yeah, know what doesn't just, get enough love, and I swear everyone forgets about it? Bro, the Dunkin' ham and cheese flatbreads were gas. Dude. Those things were, they were triangles. I don't even know what, how the hell do I make it? Okay, anyways, it was fantastic. The unsung hero of the Dunkin' menu when I was in college was the waffle breaded chicken nuggets. Oh, Ooh. wow. Oh, my God. They were Those were so, very short-lived, so too. So yeah. short-lived because no one appreciated them like I did. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, they wait. Were, I didn't even think I mean to. I meant to ask you, where'd you go to school? Boston College. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm truly 15 mile radius. <laughs> go Eags. Uh, I'm truly a 15 mile radius of Boston. Like that is, I'm there, baby. But I saw them on the menu. I was like, I need them. And my friends are like, you're a child eating waffle bread and chicken nuggets. I'm like, yeah, because children know how to eat. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. And I would Good house point. them. I would house them. And then they got rid of them and I got real sad. <laughs> So, All right, Duncan, so then, if you're listening, bring them back. Please. Bring them Even back. just for me. Like, I just, I need to taste the magic again. <laughs> so then, like, what would you say is your, like, are you, like, a New England foodie? Or, like, do you prefer, like. I'm not much of a foodie. Like, I enjoy the process of going out to eat, but I'll never seek it myself. Gotcha. Like, I find one place, I'm like, perfect. Let me just hammer away at this menu. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I am I am very similar to that. Yeah. I, I do like, I like what I like, and that's what I get. I honestly yeah. was thinking I'm going to get Chinese food on the way home. Let's go. But that's not New England. So, like, okay, so hot <laughs> or cold lobster roll? Uh, let's go hot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Say less. Do you like, well, like. Because the butter on it makes it so much yes. better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that I, oh, we have this argument all the time. I just don't think mayonnaise, mayonnaise belongs on lobster. Agreed. I don't think it's it just cold should be butter. Is good oh, yeah, cold is always Ugh. cold. Can be good, but you have to be a lobster lover for cold. Yeah, cold lobster. Exactly. And it's and just I, not worth like, taking the risk at places for how much they cost. Yeah, I'm like pretty tepid on lobster. Like I enjoy it, but I'm never gonna go out of my way. Yes, yeah, same. So I'm the same way. Do you gonna, do like oysters, clams, mussels? Do you do any of those things? I like it all fried. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, whole all fried bellies, clams, whole bellies, whole bellies, strips. Yeah. It's, I don't know, man. Oh, I usually just, just clams? get like the basket and then, like, oh, yeah. here you go. <laughs> yeah. Do you have like a favorite New England food then in general that you would say, like, above all, this is like, you know, you got like your clam chowders, I your baked beans, clam chowder. That's like, I will mm. go out of my way for clam chowder. Okay. And so when I'll, you say clam chowder, what are you referring to? Clam chowder? Yes. But what kind? I don't know, from a restaurant? No. Okay. <laughs> this makes know, me feel like you don't know that there's other options besides creamy white. Oh, clam chowder. there are other options. Okay, okay good. The fact good. that you don't know makes me happy Perfect. because if you said anything else, we would have had a yeah. problem. Technically, but in there Rhode are Island, no other options. Yeah, there's Rhode Island know. Clear, which is just the broth. So it's like people who really love seafood. It's really just a clam broth. Oh, it's almost like the... it's seasoned, but okay. So it's clear it's Rhode like Island clam chowder soup, but clams. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. Literally, and then go off Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's a red you know one. That thing that looks like vomit. What if we made it taste like it? <laughs> <laughs> that could not have been a better description of whoever the fuck came up with that. That's so true. Oh That's my so gosh. True. And, and oh. then there is a red Manhattan chowder. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I work with a company called Iggy's, and a lot of people will do the red and white like mixed. I have had it, but it's almost like putting ketchup and mayonnaise together. You're like. Mm. Does it kind of have a flavor at first? You're like, oh, yeah, it's intriguing. And then you eat the whole bowl, and you're like, I'm going to be too much of sick. That. Yeah, uh, it's like way too much. I mean, clam cheddar itself is already kind of, you know, a lot. So to, to mix a mix and match like that is yeah. no buenos. Big time question. This yep. one gets a lot of love or hate, depending on what you say. If you could add any state of all the other 44 states to New England— Make it a seventh. Which one you're adding? Uh, does proximity count? Like, do I got to stay on, like, East Coast, or can I really You can go pull? whatever you want. Can Anywhere. I, can we're just going to take it, and we're going to put it Any right state. next to us. Uh, dude, what states do I like? <laughs> <laughs> Have you traveled outside of Boston? Because so far, it seems like you only stay in a five-mile radius. Yeah, pretty this much. This is the furthest you've ever been from your home before, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I've been here for the Hyde Speakeasy. Oh, there I'm, you go, the Hyde yeah. Speakeasy, which I I've never heard of, so maybe we need to Google that after this. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Uh, well, I mean, I travel for work, but that's just like going to the hotel, then going to the office, then going to the hotel. You don't really like see the mm, place. That's fair. Um, I guess I don't want to do process of elimination, but I know we can't do Florida. That's that's out. Can't do that. You can yeah. if you want to do Florida, but you got to give us a good reason. I don't want Florida. I'm crossing it off. Oh, okay. Oh Guys, yeah, what do you mean give a good reason? I love Florida. You love I'm, Florida? I'm a Florida guy. Oh. No. I lived give in Miami for Well, yeah, a he stayed years. in Miami. That give me eight reasons and then when you do give me <laughs> eight more. <laughs> the sun, the sun, the warm <laughs> weather, the ocean, the life. sun. No. <laughs> that's about all I got for you. I, I guess. I, was, I, I can't give you one solid reason why I'm I'm here in Rhode Island, where I'm from. So That's honestly, fair. this is, I want to be in Ireland. That's where I want to go. That it would be sick. Which honestly, I already know. I'm like a given. Like I'm like a, a yin and yang. My calm side would wake up and be like on like my own property and land with like all of my animals, and it'd be like this is so peaceful. And then when the ADHD kicks in, I'd be like, oh, I gotta get the fuck out yeah. of here. Take me <laughs> off this island. I need to go. I need to be where there is other people. 
Anyways, sorry. <laughs> right on. Uh, you know what? Give me a. Uh, Give me Tennessee. I feel Ooh. like I feel like they know how to have fun. That's a first Tennessee. Yeah, yeah that is they a know first. How to have I like fun. that. <laughs> Nashville's sick. Yeah. yeah. They got we a good vibe. They're like south but not quite south, Yeah, you know. I I cool. think they got a good thing going. Cool. You yeah, like country music then? Kind of. All right. I love the concerts. Kind of tepid on the music. Yeah, the concerts are so much fun. Concerts are way. I think pound for pound that's the most kind of fun concert. Country. I've heard that from okay. a lot of people. Like even if you don't listen to it, you go, you have a good time. You have a great time. Yeah. Like that's any good. any Fenway concert that's yeah. country, oh my god, what a treat! That's I feel like because cool. it's such like a it's like a nice subtle mix of everything. Because I feel like with like rap, you can kind of dance, but like most people kind of just smoke weed and they just like nod their head. Unless you go to one of those like Travis uh, Travis Scott, T- yeah, Travis Scott, that guy goes like nuts. But then well, like he heavy has, like, metal, like, everyone just like at his. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like country is like a happy medium between all of the genres because lyrically it's like good. Usually there's a good tune that can kind of make you bob your head and dance, and it's typically feel good. Yeah. So like everyone's in a good mood, and it doesn't mm. really incite fights or riots or That's people getting point. pissed. You know? That's a fair point. Yeah. Just a little. All right. It's also just Tennessee. beer drinking music. That's really yeah. yeah like there you go. Down to it. Yeah. What cool. do you have a favorite beer? The next one. Uh, the next <laughs> one's a great answer, but I really like Miller Lite. Miller Lite oh, just okay. it, it, it Classy. talks to me. Yeah. It talks. No lights, the <laughs> champagne of beers, right? No, that's Coors. Coors Banquet. Jesus. Oh, wow. yeah. You uncultured champion. swine. If it doesn't have a flavor beer. that's not like fruit, you know I can't drink it. Well, we do stuff. Sammy Adams around here, pal, okay? Your you cousin from Rhode period. Island. <laughs> <laughs> your, other co- your other cousin's cousin from Rhode Island. Listen, probably what it Adams should be. And be drunk. <laughs> I'm seeing that they're branching out and doing some socials now. Yeah, they Adams. are, yeah. yeah. Maggie got on one. That's yes. dope. Yeah. yeah. So... All right. Well, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Lin- Oh, not LinkedIn. I'm not there. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch every now and then, at Fenty Fried Chicken. That's where all my stuff is. And if you want to come see me perform stand-up, uh, all my links are in my link tree. And I will be performing at the Grand Ten Distillery on Friday the 30th. I will be hosting a comedy coupe show at Bully Boy Distillers on September 6th. And then I'll be touring in Chicago on September 22nd, Atlanta on October 3rd, San Diego on November 17th, and Chandler, Arizona on December 15th. Nice. Fantastic, man. You got a lot of fun, exciting stuff coming up. a lot of fun. Super happy for you, man. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you very, very much for coming down and joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. You thank guys, you. that is going to conclude us for episode 13 of the So New England podcast. Thank you for tuning in and listening to Fenty Fried Chicken here, Joe, and and, and listening to all of our fun stories <laughs> and all the nuts stuff that we got going on today. And uh, as always, guys, remember, life's better in New England. <laughs>